Are you ready to unlock the best weapons in the game and take your hunting potential to the next level? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Foriam and in this weapon series, I've got you covered as I'm going to show you how to unlock top tier endgame Navi weapon blueprints and find the rarest exquisite resources to craft them with the highest stat rules possible to be ready for any encounter in the endgame. Both wildlife hunting and RDA extermination are going to become child's play in Frontiers of Pandora. Today we're going to unlock and craft my hands down favorite bow in the game, the Sotlek Survivor Heavy Bow, which hits like a trick. So let's get down to business. All right, so first off, what you want to do is make your way to the Resistance Hideout, a new HQ in the Clouded Forest where you want to talk with Sotlek. Hey. This is where you can pick up all the blueprints for top tier exquisite bows, without doubt the best ones in the game, with amazing stats for hunting wildlife and RDA forces. So, for this craft, we're gonna need exquisite root, superior reeds, and fine horns. While if you manage to get your hands on all the materials in exquisite quality, the damage values will be as high as possible, especially if you have a pristine harvest or clean kill, which is exactly what I'm gonna show you in today's video. So, as primary material, you need an exquisite root. Let's check out the hunter's guides as we have three different roots the canopy root from the Kinglore Forest the plains root from the upper plains, and also the rack trunk root from, of course, the clouded forest. The highest exquisite value you can find is 93. So you want to search for the best quality, first off during the day, while the rarer rack trunk roots are found near the waterfall emerging from the crying giant in the northwest of the clouded forest. The description of the Hunter's Guide can be pretty deceiving as it says where the waterfall emerges from the crying giant. So from my perspective, I would say the very beginnings of the waterfall. Well, you kind of want to look at the destination where it arrives and forms a river. All right, so here we are right in front of the crying giant, as you can see. If we use our Navi powers, you basically want to search for these rack trunk trees. See, if you press and hold your scanning on the very bottom of these trees, you should be able to find the roots themselves. And right now I can already see one shining right there. So let's just quickly land our Ikran. Press and hold your Navi powers below them. You should be able to find some superior and sometimes even exquisite roots underneath. That's a purple one as well. So we want to move on. You can always go a little bit more down the river if you are not lucky on top as right here you can also come across these rack trunk roots and this is one of exquisite quality. Gently push towards the top as this allows you to gather pristine quality and of course during the day you should be able to get your hands on 93, the highest value in the game. Unfortunately, further into the woods, you won't be able to find superior quality anymore so be sure to stick to this specific location. You can always power up the Stony Glade Station, which is right next to it. So you have a pretty easy quick travel to pass time. Be sure to pick up like two or three, so you definitely have plenty for your future crafts. So now that we have four roots of the absolute maximum quality, let's move on to the exquisite reeds. I already found one pale canyon reed earlier, which is also the highest quality one which you can find. Silt reed goes up to 37, sunset up to 28, while pale canyon goes to 56. And with a 10% damage boost, this is without doubt the best material to get your hands on. And for 56, we want to search in an unknown location somewhere in the clouded forest. The funny thing is, I randomly stumbled upon this resource when I escaped the RDA prison. Unfortunately, the Pale Canyon Reed is one of those very rare resources for which you're gonna need a hurricane for the absolute best quality harvest, which is extremely difficult to find in the game. So what I recommend you to do is instead settle with a thunderstorm, which already can be a little bit challenging depending on your luck, for which I recommend you to liberate the Drill Outpost Alpha and the Mossy Nuke Field Lab, which are pretty close to where we need to be. And when you're lucky to find one of these weather conditions, you want to make your way northeast of the Carver's River to this exact location where you can harvest a bell sprig. You should land with your Ikran on this specific rock as this is where you could, if you want AFK, possibly wait for the thunderstorm to change into a hurricane. This is not very likely to happen anytime soon, but when you jump down, this will basically disable your Navi powers if you are in certain progression of the game. And then you are 100% certain you are in the right spot because this, ladies and gentlemen, 
is where you can gather the sealed reeds. If you harvest them as a pristine quality, not during a hurricane, you will already have a item level of 51, which is very close to the maximum of 56. You should exclusively go for hurricane quality if it randomly pops up on your map during your regular adventures, let's say. Otherwise, you're just gonna waste a ton of time skipping time and not really actually playing the game. I'm definitely gonna give you guys an update on the channel when I do finally encounter a hurricane. Right now though, let's move on to the next material required for this craft. So yeah, we've got plenty of reeds, plenty of the rack trunk roots. I think three each are gonna be more than enough. So last but not least, we need to find a horn as secondary material. Again, it's very important to check out the highest item values possible. This one with 10% stealth damage goes up to 37 on an exquisite harvest, while the blade heads and hammer horns aren't that interesting because they have much lower values. So yes, I think we should take out a storm glider of exquisite quality. These are most commonly found patrolling the skies over their territories. The rarer ones, though, are typically found above mountains and mountaintops throughout the clouded forest. If you want to have a full guide on how you can easily take out a storm glider without too much hustle, you should definitely check out my guide in the top right of the screen, as there I cover everything you need to do to best prepare for this battle and make these encounters pretty easy. Get your hands on the best possible stat rolls for the materials dropped. But let me quickly show you a location very close to where we're currently at, the Stone Cloud Valley, where you can find one of these fellas as well. Check out this bell sprig, which is basically on the right side of the steps in the sky, to the west of the Crying Giants. So be sure to place your marker right there. This is about two kilometers away from us, but this is where you should also be able to find a storm glider. We're flying right towards it right now, and look at that, it's already hoovering over the flying plateau. I think the best way to deal with these fellas is to simply land on the platform, land a couple shots with your heavy bow, very important. Aim for the weak spot, which are basically the lungs in its neck. If it gets very close, just jump off the platform, rinse and repeat until it's gone. It's pretty difficult to land a clean kill on these fellas. But here we go, we got our hands on another Storm Glider Tooth and Horn, this time 48 quality, as well as a nice piece of meat. But there we go, we got our hands on all the exquisite loot to craft this legendary bow. So let's get back to our hideout. Now for the final step, it's pretty important. Wow, we even have four of each, as you can see right here. But uh, it's very important that you check out the maximum qualities. So um, right here we have Rag Trunk Root, all of 93, the absolute highest value possible. Then we have Pale Canyon Reed, 51. I think 56 is max when you have a hurricane, while for the horns, we can choose between Mere Deers for 37, Blade Head for 28, and Storm Glider for 48. So if we combine all that, we get a total of almost 200, ladies and gentlemen. This one restores both energy and HP after killing an enemy, and the draw time is also reduced by 20%. So this is gonna be an amazing one to use to make your hunting life so much easier. All right, so there you have it. Everything you need to know to craft your own Sotlek Survivor Heavy Bow of the highest quality possible. An exquisite craft with insane amounts of damage to get you ready for the end game in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. If you found this video helpful, please do hit that like button. You have no idea how much you help out the channel with it. And I am very curious if one of you guys managed to find a hurricane. Be sure to let us know in the comments down below or in general what your maximum stat roll is on this weapon. Anyways, a big thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more as plenty more Avatar is coming your way. Right now though, it's 4am out. Have an awesome day. I'll check you in the next video or live stream. Peace.